Part 2. The Discovery. The kindness in her eyes being the last thing I saw as I fell asleep must have really affected me, since I had wonderful dreams that night. They involved everything from running across flowery meadows, to her saving my life countless times from really scary creatures. Well, as scary as they can get based on the assumption of what other creatures could live in this world. As I could slowly feel my body parts and the wonderful soft bed sheets below me, I started to wake up. From my dreams of paradise it was a simple, hello? That brought me back to reality. The voice sounded almost like a ten-year-old boy. Not even close to the soft female voice of Twilight. I made an uh, noise as I slowly opened my eyes to find out who it could be. The realization of that I'm alive must have really given this person a shock as the first thing my eyes saw was a small purple and green creature jumping back a few feet and almost tumbling over. As my memory slowly came back of what happened yesterday, Twilight's gentle voice echoed in my head. You have to promise me not to show yourself to anyone. Did this weird mutated lizard count? He had purple skin, just like Twilight yellow belly, and green spikes protruding out on his back, similar to a dinosaur, I guess. The words dinosaur, dragon, and lizard came back to me. I was worried about breaking my promise to Twilight. I needed to say something. Uh, an excuse. Um, I am... Um, was all of that my rusty, tired throat could produce. Uh, don't worry. I am Twilight's right hand and best friend, Spike. Spike? Was everyone named after what they looked like here? Twilight left this morning to retrieve some groceries and told me to keep an eye out on you. So don't try any funny tricks. I can breathe fire! T Twilight told you about me? Yes, but she didn't need to. I live here too, you know, and it was hard for me not to notice how panicked she was when she rushed inside. She told me to hide behind that table and cover my ears. He pointed towards a small wooden table in the corner next to the bottom of the staircase. On top of it were a few letters and a quill with ink. I did as told, but I couldn't help but to take a sneak peek to have a look at you. What are you exactly? I looked at him for a few seconds, deciding in my mind if he was trustworthy or not. Things have been so crazy lately since I got here, and here comes possibly the world's smallest dinosaur to top it off. I decided that I will just have to trust him. He was missing the warm sparkle in his eyes that Twilight had had that made me trust her. But if she could trust Spike to live with her, I will just have to trust him for now and take the consequences, if there are any. Um, I am human. From the Earth. I have no idea where Earth is from this point. And I have absolutely no idea of who I am or why I'm here. Humans and Earth? I've heard of that before. Yeah. It was just a few days ago that Twilight told me about- He quickly bit his lip and just for good measure covered up his mouth as well. This was definitely something I was not supposed to know about. I raised my eyebrows to his statement and prepared my response. Please continue. What did she tell you? I was not really a big fan of the secrecy going on and I wanted my answers. Um, it was nothing really. She read about it in a book or something. I don't really remember. Just after that, I discovered how lightning fast reactions I really have. The door downstairs creaked open and, afraid of being seen, I jumped in a quick fashion behind the bed and pulled the bed sheets on top of me for good measure. Spike seemed very satisfied with his new and appropriate distraction. Oh look, Twilight is back! He turned around and discovered me taking cover behind the bed as if a boogeyman had just broken in. What the heck are you doing? Twilight put down some things on the table, which I assumed to be groceries, and turned to Spike with a worried expression. Where is he? He is right here! He pulled off my ghostly bedsheet disguise. I swear I didn't do anything to him! I was feeling embarrassed about my quick maneuver as I rose up, now standing behind a highly messed up bed without bedsheets on it. Um, I thought you were someone else, since this is a public library and all. Oh. It's okay. I'm glad you took such precautions for the sake of our promise. Myself, I bought some books from the bookshop about more complicated teleportation spells. I need to study deeply to find the way to get you back to your home as quick as possible. She reached down a bag and grabbed some bedsheets. Meanwhile, I'll borrow these from a friend of mine. You can stay here until I've found a way. 
Spike, will you go and bed these sheets on our extra mattress? Yes, ma'am. Spike got up, grabbed the bed sheets, and got to work on his new task. I see you've met my assistant Spike. He's a baby dragon. Scratch giant lizard and miniature dinosaur. Baby dragon, it is. Did you have sweet dreams? Actually, yes. But hang on for a second. You said spells? Yes, I perform magic. Magic. The word echoed in my mind for a second. Her eyes yelled it, but I wouldn't believe it. She can perform magic. She knows about teleportation spells. She was the first to notice me. She spied on me. She told me not to tell anyone else about this situation. She knows more about me than myself, it seems. Oh, there was not a single doubt in my mind. She brought me here. In some way or another. She must have brought me here for a reason, right? But why would she in that case work so hard to find a way for me to get back as quick as possible? I decided not to accuse her of anything just yet, since I did not have enough facts or answers to confront her in that way. Also, she said she was going to help me get back home, and that's really everything I could ask for, so hopefully I could trust her. Spike was quickly finished with his mission, and while Twilight kept reading books, he and I sat down and discussed my questions about this world. He told me a lot of things. It was the ever free forest that I had come from, but it did not surprise him that I did. Apparently, the ever free forest is the home of many weird creatures, and he was also surprised that I had not seen any monsters on my way out of it. He also told me that the main population here was ponies, similar to humans on Earth. This place, country, planet, whatever, was named Equestria, with the princess Celestia being the ruler and living in Canterlot. <laughs> the capital city, I assumed. Soon my mind was filled with facts about this place. Huh. I have now been imprisoned in Twilight's library for three days. She treats me like a guest, giving me dinner, making my bed, and literally she wasn't lying about studying hard to find a way for me to get back. But I was not allowed to leave. That was the condition. I was really curious about this town, going through my memories of running across the village of Ponyville three days earlier to remember every detail. But my loyalty was just too big for any escape attempts. But honestly, it would be pretty easy for me to escape. It was not like as if I had chains holding me to a wall. When Twilight was home, she never locked the door, and I would easily be able to sneak out during one of her studying sessions. Fighting boredom was not a big problem, actually. When I was not talking to Twilight or Spike, hearing their interesting stories about this place, I was reading. Books and more books. The advantage of living in a library. I read everything I got my hands on. I learned about the elements of harmony, how Equestria was founded, and literature. Yeah, everything, pretty much. During these three days, I had plowed through about ten books. That day was the first day I was left home alone in this library. Proof of how much Twilight really trusted me. And I screwed it up. Pretty badly. Twilight had left to go to the Everfree Forest to gather some ingredients, and Spike had to come with her since he is a good digger. I didn't really imagine Twilight getting her hooves dirty anyway. They left early in the morning so that they would have lots of time, and I swore to stay and not to be seen by anyone else, no matter what. I broke both of those promises that day. I was reading about spells written by Starswell the Bearded when the knocking came. A very light and optimistic voice was heard behind that creaky door. Hello? Twilight? You've been so mysterious and spooky lately, I decided to check what's going on. Are you there? She knocked again. Hello? I was waiting for her to leave, but she didn't. It was like she had no common sense about someone not being home. I was just standing there looking at the door. And even after hearing no response for a while, she was still there. And I felt my fear turning into anger as I could not help but shouting, She's not here! 
My eyes grew twice the size as I had realized what I had just done. Not only does the person know about my presence, but she will never leave now that there is a strange creature inside her friend's home. I was left just standing there, frozen, waiting for the damage I had caused to, to reveal itself. Huh? That isn't Twilight! Who's in there? The knocking came back, more persistent this time. Hello? I'm coming in! I knew Twilight had most likely locked the door, but what if this person had a spare key? I could not take any chances as I ran upstairs, performing the maneuver I had pulled off a few days earlier, jumping over and behind the bed. Just like last time, I was now waiting underneath a layer of Twilight's bedsheets. I could not express how lucky I was feeling at that moment for taking that precaution. Twilight had forgotten to lock the door. The doorknob was turned, and I could hear the hoofsteps of another pony entering my castle. I was shaking my nervousness as I didn't know what would happen if she saw me. I could not fail Twilight. I just couldn't. But at that moment, I realized that my left leg was peeking out and visible from the other side of the bed. So I crawled back a bit so I could get into a better position. If I only hadn't done what I had just done, I would have maybe gotten away with it. As I crawled back, my head bumped into the nightstand next to the bed. It made a clear but loud noise that anyone would notice. My heart stopped as the intruder said, Oh, I've got you now! As she walked up the stairs towards me, she giggled as if this was a game. A game of hide and seek. <laughs> she was closer, now on the other side of the bed, and any movement I made would make the situation worse. She must have noticed my not-so-clever disguise as she yelled, Aha! I gotcha! As she pulled off the sheets and got the surprise of a lifetime. Me. The pony that screamed for her life and ran out the door right away was pink, with a puffy, darker pink hair smelling like cotton candy. I had now broken my first promise to Twilight. Don't be seen by anyone. I could not tell if she was going to come back with a torch and pitchfork, or if she was scarred for the rest of her life. But I had to prepare for a return, quickly. All I was wishing for was a way to alert Twilight, so she could come and protect me. But she said she would come home at sundown. And it was almost noon now. I was all alone and nowhere to go because then it would break my second promise. Stay in the library, no matter what. Not only would I fail Twilight again, but also if I left out the door to hide somewhere else, I would be guaranteed to be found way faster. I jumped over the bed and ran to the door. Unfortunately, the door could only be locked with a key, even from the inside. A key which Twilight had not offered me yet. So I grabbed whatever furniture I could find, and I pulled it in front of the door. Uh, two tables and a, th and a chair had to do it. Now, I had no other way of preparing than to wait. And wait, I did. About one hour later, my fears came true. While reading a book to pass time, the pink pony was back. And this time, she brought the cavalry. She had reinforcements. I could hear them outside the door as they were walking closer. I swear, you guys! I saw him! He was there! The pink pony said. Hush now, we're here. I am so dead. My mind whispered to me. I heard the doorknob being turned, but this time they were met with resistance. The furniture. Unfortunately, the door opened a little bit before being blocked, and they were able to realize that it was not the lock that kept them from entering. The cotton candy pony said. I am so dead. My mind was telling me. Move over then. Another voice responded. This creature, which I assumed to be another pony, had a southern accent. Like a farmer, stereotypically. Then I heard some change in footsteps as if they were changing formation. Then I heard kicking. The farmer, apparently, was now trying to kick in the door. The furniture vibrated showing that the plan was working for them. I am so dead! My mind was yelling at me. Do something! I looked around and noticed the window. It was small and round, but just enough for me to squeeze through. I took this as a last resort, but I had to get out of there. I opened the hatch on the window and then slowly pushed the window open as I heard the chair being knocked away from the door. I was two tables away from being discovered. 
I crawled out the window as quickly as possible, and just in time as I heard the door fly open, at the same time as I landed headfirst on the ground. I stayed there, afraid of moving. I heard the sound of hooves walking inside. There is nobody here. And don't you tell me that I just kicked in the door for no reason? The farmer pony said. I swear! I found him behind Twilight's bed, hiding! Huh? That's strange. He isn't here now. I allowed myself to, to smile a bit. How could he even get here? He is not from our world. I don't know. Do they know who I am? I have never seen them before. Maybe there's a reason why he was hiding with Twilight. A new voice said. The voice was very noble as a British lady. How many of them are there? I was thinking. Well, in addition to the farmer and the cotton candy pony, we now have the lady. I mean, she's been very secret and inactive lately. Maybe she brought him here somehow. Exactly! The cotton candy pony seemed very proud of that excuse of her being right the whole time. But where did he go then? This window is open! He must have climbed out! As the cotton candy pony said that, my heart stopped for a second time. They were going to find me. No doubt. Twilight... Where are you? I had to find Twilight. She could stop them. She said she went to the Everfee Forest. That's where I came from. My mind was in top gear right now. Mentally studying the path on which I had chased Twilight before for so long was a very good choice, since I had now the path to run and, hopefully, find Twilight. As I heard the ponies walk over to the window, I prepared myself to run. There was a catch, though. I had to run around and past the front of the treehouse to get on track. Hopefully, they were all inside looking out the window by that time. Now or never, I thought, as I took off in a quick start. I rounded the tree. But as I looked at the door, I caught her eye contact. The fourth pony, guarding the door. Why didn't I expect this? She had yellow fur and light pink hair. Way lighter than the cotton candy pony's pink hair. She must be reserved since she did not talk before. But now, she was screaming on the top of her lungs. Ah! He's here! He's right here! This was the third time my heart stopped in the matter of five minutes. I did not stop though. I ran as fast as I could away from the library, having nothing but the Everfree Forest in mind. I had received a great head start, as when I looked back, they had all gathered outside and just spotted me, but I was several hundreds of feet away. They all started to run after me, in a formation similar to a herd of cows gone wild. They were now yelling at me to wait, they were yelling at me to stop. But when you are being chased by four creatures that are twice as big, twice as heavy, and twice as strong, you do not wait. You do not stop. You run. And you run like hell. I tried not to focus on the enemies behind me and focus more on the track, but whenever I looked back, they were closer. They were a lot faster than me and any time they could have caught up to me. I had to shake them off my tail since I could not outrun them. When I finally arrived in the center of Ponyville, there was roughly 50 feet in distance between us. In an attempt to confuse them and get them off track, I ran into narrow alleyways. I took left and right in a random order to get them lost, but then I realized I was lost too. But I just kept going. I thought my plan worked, since when I got out on the main street, only three of them were left. The farmer was missing. I had gained more air in between us. And now it was about 100 feet, as I thought my plan was working perfectly. I had passed many other civilian ponies while running in this town now, but the street seemed empty, abandoned. As I ran along the street, it got tighter and tighter between the buildings, and there was no other way to go than forward. So that's where I ran. That is also where my plan backfired, because in the distance, I witnessed a movement in the outlet of the street. It was the farmer. She had left the herd and taken smarter turns to predict my spontaneous movements, and when I was out on this street, she could easily run around and cut me off from the only way out of there. I stopped, looking fiercely for a way out. But there was none. They had me surrounded, exactly where they wanted me. They slowed down and instead started to walk slowly towards me, preparing for any sudden attacks. 
Here to explain to us what incarnation you think you're doing here, and where Twilight is. The farmer said as she walked up towards me. Who are you? I whispered, but I don't know if they heard it. It was more of a small, desperate squeak, actually. I started to panic inside. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. It was over. I should have just surrendered right there, but I didn't. I decided to fight until the very last second. As the four ponies approached me, three from my back and the farmer from my front, I decided to try and run around the farmer and in that way escape. It was a horrible plan, but I tried. I took off against the buildings on my right in an attempt to run around the farmer pony and avoid her snatch, but I failed. As soon as she saw what was coming, she jumped and tackled me to the cold, hard ground. For the second time, I was lying helpless under the weight of these creatures. TWILAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAA